now time for Edgy Wars. This is the ultimate battle for unfathomable riches. You won't believe the riches that they're competing for. Well, you might believe the riches that they're competing for. So this is a competition uh, to, uh, which involves a toxicology subject which has been taught and delivered within a certain time limit without the use of any slides or panels. We have three gladiatorial groups and individuals fighting for this. Yes. scientific MF patented noise emitter measurer <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> which may or may not be bought off eBay at some point later. But it's very scientific, that's what you've got to remember. So could we have Eva, our first contestant, can we welcome her up please? Okay, hello. Uh, the timer is here or oh. Uh, we're going to talk about that. Yeah, I don't know. What, what are the it's okay, it's okay, you, know, you carry on. Okay, I'm just going to take off my... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Start. Oh, I was going to use one. <clears throat> Let's hope that I don't faint. <sighs> okay, everybody, I am Eva. I am an emergency medicine resident from Finland and also the host of Finnem, the Finnish Emergency Medicine Podcast. And I'm here today to talk about organophosphate poisonings. I visited last month uh, South Africa, Johannesburg, and I was really struck by the amount of organophosphate poisonings that were there. Uh, it is the most common poisoning in the world, and it actually kills over 200,000 people annually, and mainly in the developing countries. So why do people use organophosphate for suicidal purposes? It's cheap, it's accessible, and it's very lethal. So this was something very new to me and not seen them before. And within one week, I could witness 10 cases, patient comatose, intubated, terrible. But I'm trying to teach you how it works. So. You know, as a Tucholine, somebody's heard about it. <laughs> as a Tucholine is a neurotransmitter in neuromuscular junctions in the autonomic nervous system and in that central nervous system. It goes to two receptors, the muscarine and nicotine receptors. And you also need to know about acetylcholine esterase. It's an enzyme that breaks acetylcholine. So there is a nice level balance in the synapse when esterase is there. So acetylcholine goes away, comes back, goes away, nice balance. <coughs> However, what happens? <laughs> <laughs> Organophosphate blocks the acetylcholine esterase. And this makes the acetylcholine level stay high all the time. And this causes the effect 
of the organ of phosphate poisoning. So, what works? What to do? The only proven effective drug for this is atropine. And what atropine does... <laughs> these are muscarine receptors, and this sock here is the atropine. <laughs> it, it goes and blocks the receptors. It's not an antidote, it's an antagonist. Here we go. So, one more time, acetylcholine in the receptors, muscarine and nicotine, uh, acetylcholine estrose breaks it down, comes back up, nice balance. However, when there's organophosphate, the level of acetylcholine goes up or stays high. And what helps is the sock atropine. <laughs> goes to the muscarine receptors. And one most important thing that I want to say, this is a very serious issue. Resources, research, and intervention are being needed in developing countries for this issue. Thank you very much. Here is our next brave, intrepid educationalist. Oh, I like props. I'm, I'm honest with you, I'm glad that said it was Avis Oxen, not mine, that were being used in that. That's that actually our antidote. Yeah, good with the Yeah, channels in it. Now, this one over here is called sodium potassium pump. Remember, sodium is yellow because I like salty marshmallow. So that is only one hurdle that potassium is purple. Now through this channel, three sodium molecules, they move out outside the cell and two potassium molecules move back in. So three sodium molecules out again and two potassium in. Here we have another channel called sodium calcium channel. Now calcium is white because our teeth are bright. So through this channel, sodium moves back in, and every time three sodium molecules move in, one calcium goes out. So three sodium in and one calcium out. <coughs> now, when I was missing something that was acting by a hydroxyl molecule. So when the digoxin comes, it binds to this channel in toxicity and it blocks the flow of sodium and potassium. So sodium starts to get inside because it can't go out and potassium starts to get outside because it can't come in. So there's hyperkalemia outside which is also one of the indicators of digoxin toxicity. All this sodium then tries to escape to this channel. So the flow over here reverses every time three sodium molecules go out, one calcium comes in. Three sodium out, one calcium in. This leads to buildup of calcium inside. Now, normally this would lead to increased contractility to the heart with buildup of calcium inside, but with hyperkalemia and buildup of sodium inside and buildup of calcium inside, the heart goes into and that's what I think here. <laughs> right, I am uh, doing a better list to get across a message. Okay. And we have lots of patients. And normally I do this in small group teaching with post-its, but I don't think they're going to back over. So indulge me. We're going to use these as the post-its. So I have a patient I've been asked to see. This is a boys' talk, but let's work out what happens. So Ross complaining about the big reveal. Hard luck, he's getting a reveal. Okay, patient with dizziness and headache, not here for Dead excited. Right? Oh, okay. Breathing a little bit fast, but one more look at What's the smell? They're all complaining about, I can't smell anything I smoke. <laughs> Patient falls asleep. Not you guys. Patient. 
not me reading fast, the patient's beginning to look like they're struggling. This is going awfully quickly. What's going on here? I'm worried this might happen. What were the clues? Because if I don't start treating, in terms of this red, they're going to be in trouble. I'm going to stop there and see if we can work it out. We have a patient who's come in with nausea vomiting. It's not carbon monoxide. This is a little bit hard. Okay? But there is a smell of smoke. Okay? So there's no smell of bitter almond because that doesn't always work. But what's a nice, simple molecule? I'd say, no, what's the other one that we're all supposed to remember that? Cyanide. And you all think, no, I'm never going to see a cyanide because I'm going to be dead at the scene. Well, they're not. Some of them come in and are struggling. And how are you going to work it out? The numbers are going to be wrong. The lactate's going to be bigger than you expect. And if you've got a fancy blood gas machine in your department, the carbon monoxide level is going to be low. Do you know what's going on with this? Now, if the patient goes all the way down to, let's stop it before death, okay? The patient goes down to the convulsion stage. The patient goes down to the cardiac arrest stage. Fix that out of pupils before the adrenaline goes in. Look in the back of the eye. The blood vessels will be the same color. Okay? Putting the line in. You go, oh my god, I hit an artery. You have it, you hit a vein, but because you cannot get your oxygen offloaded into the cells, the blood's red on both sides. Okay? No hospital I know in the UK is actually going to give you point of care cyanide testing. So you treat, right? Okay, cost 700 quid, but what have you got to lose? Catheterize the patient, and that starts happening. <gasps> What's that? And that's the right treatment, because I'm not allowed to use the poppers anymore. It doesn't really work, and it gives them that hemoglobinemia. You've got to remember that cyanide is a poison. You can treat it, and in every single house fire, especially if it's peri-arrest, it is worth your while giving it. It takes 15 minutes to give it, and it comes with its own instructions. It is not difficult. Thank you. Right, so I'm not allowed to be trusted to hold a very expensive noise at 2000. <laughs> it probably is from 2000. No, it's not. It's not. Good. So what we're going to do is we are going to do three 10-second timed <laughs> cheers. For presentation one, and I give fair warning for presentation two, and fair warning for presentation You get the idea, okay? So, we have 10 seconds, a loud cheering, screaming, etc., etc., starting now. Presentation two. Ready, steady, go. <laughs> I get more and more. <laughs> okay, pres presentation three, go.
Now we have had two other prizes to hand out for the best posters yep. and infographics. So, uh, after uh, scientific rigor and um, much deliberation, deliberation um, a lot of payment, um, mucking around and trying to get the exact one, the, we decided that the best poster was the nudge poster. So where was the nudge poster before? Presentations End by a chap called Gar Reynolds. Costs you about 20 quid at Amazon. It is the best book, and it's a privilege to give you this for your person. First of all, I'd like to thank you all for coming and for being yes. active and generating a very nice atmosphere and you should all be congratulated for being interested in education. And stuff. <laughs> of course, I'd like to thank all of the speakers and everyone who ran workshops. <coughs> There's been a lot of work and you can obviously tell us going to all of those sessions and they have been very, very uh, well put together and prepared. So thank you for the <laughs> Thank you to Chris and Scott who have put together and created a very, a very entertaining and educational day. Not only are you managing to create an EMEC movement, which is what it is, <laughs> but it is now its third year and you should be congratulated and they're too self deprecating. But well <laughs> um, So I really do hope, sincerely hope you've enjoyed today. I, there has been a theme of well-being that we've tried to put throughout today. We know that you all work hard and we know that it's tough and we do appreciate you taking your busy time out to come to this conference today. I think if I could just implore you all to take back what you've learned today to the way you work and hopefully instill uh, be nice and kind to each other. Uh, with that in mind, we want to see you all next year at MF 2018. Um, but before that, there is a pub around the corner, which is a map on your uh, itinerary of the day, and I hope to see you there too. Thank you very, very much. Have a safe journey.